how far away is the sun? So I did this mm, uh, complicated, all the math and the geography. My voice is so weird today. Again, insufficient usage of my vocal cords and insufficient level of alcohol. <laughs> I am not drunk enough for this. I need to buy white wine. I have white wine. Okay, so this is what I did. In order to figure out where is the sun, because with this whole satellite mystery, as I dig deeper, I'm not digging, I am falling headfirst into the rabbit hole of mystery fantastical. Sparkle sound. <laughs> Nikola Tesla is one of my greatest heroes of the he I look up to Nikola Tesla I find him inspiring and I try to remind myself and other people that he kept an open mind and that's how he made so many of his discoveries because if he had let all this narrow-minded Edison and Waterhouse, Waterhouse Cooper? No. <laughs> um, the electrical company. No free energy for everyone. Just uh, free energy for us that we can then sell on to the consumer for high prices. That's not the point. Or is it? Maybe it is. My story is that I think it's important to what would Nikola Tesla do? So I've been thinking about it and trying to figure it out since my ooh, satellites what the hell video. One of the things that I came across in the depths of the mysteries of our universe reality, people are arguing about how far is the sun. So we have all these GoPros going up into the atmosphere and uh, taking images of the earth from super high up and then there's the sun in all its glory. There's some debate about should the sun be it's creating this light spot, all these things. And so I thought I would kind of take it down to something simple and try to figure out, okay, if the sun is 93 million miles away, says NASA, and all of the scientists, and also Wikipedia, and all the science websites, then we should be able to totally figure that shit out and dispel any wacky madness suggesting otherwise. So that's what I set out to do. Equilateral triangles means all the three sides are the same length, and the three angles are all the same as well. All the inside angles of a triangle can sum up to 180. This doesn't matter. The three angles are the same, 60 degrees, and the three sides are the same. So anytime you have a triangle that has 60 degrees in one corner and 60 degrees in the other corner, then you know that the third corner is 60 degrees as well because angles have to add up to 180 because that's how triangles work. But then you also know that then the three lengths are the same. And then you measure the length between those two points where you've measured the 60 degree angle. Then you know that the angle at the top is also going to be 60 degrees. And that the distance between the two people down here is going to be the same as the distance between the peoples and the sun. Ooh. Easy peasy. It's just geometry. Figuring out oh, this, all the mysteries, the solutions, the answers to everything. Okay, we need two people. One would have to be, oh, if the sun is 93 million miles away, then you'd have to have one person. And then that person would measure from the horizon to the sun at a 60 degree angle. So if I look out and then I oh 60 degrees from horizon and there's the sun, then if the distance between the sun and I is 93 million miles, then the other person who is standing facing me and they are also measuring the sun at 60 degrees from their horizon and looking into my not so pretty face, but all made up face, um, they would should be 93 million miles away. And then that makes the triangle work. 
but this is where everything chaos because I took all the time differences of the different time zones into account. I looked at what time does the sun rise, what time does the sun set in all the different places in the world on the equator because that's easier. I chose Macapá in Brazil. It's south of kind of maybe New York-ish kind of just that end of the state. That's an easy reference point for people. And then I looked on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, Equatorial Guinea. There's the city also on the equator, M Malabo. Malabo. We have uh, Malabo, Malabo in uh, Equatorial Guinea over here. And then we have Macapá in Brazil over here. And so I figured, that's actually not, I went about it differently. This is, the, I'm, this is the end result. If you're standing in Macapá, Brazil, and you're facing Equatorial New Guinea, Africa, and so I'm facing Africa, and this is the horizon, and so I looked, okay, if the sun is at 60 degrees from the horizon in the sky, what time is it? What time is the sunrise in Mac my kappa. <laughs> I'm gonna use my notes. So the sunrise in um, my kappa is at 6:23 a.m. And so this, and then I looked for when is the sun directly overhead. Oh, oh yeah, that's what I did. I looked at um, the, around the summer solstice. It is super hot in my room, so I had my fan running. I didn't, I forgot to turn it off for the video. So now I'm just going to blend this audio in <laughs> and hope for the best. The noon sun is directly above this person. That's why I chose um, my kappa, because it's on the equator. And so then we know that the sun is directly overhead. So then I looked, okay, so at what time was uh, sunrise? And then we know that noon is when the sun is directly overhead. So then we can calculate if the sun is at a 60 degree angle from the person standing in my kappa, doo -doo -doo, then just we can figure that out with the time and blah, 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 math. At 10 a.m., when the person in my kappa is looking towards Africa, they're seeing the sun at 60 degrees from the horizon. Okay, well, where would the sun be at a 60 degree angle from the horizon in the afternoon? From dusk, facing that person in my because then you would have the two angles of your equilateral triangle of 60 degrees, right? And you just have to measure the distance between them. Malabo and Mecca <laughs> but they're both on the equator. So then the, I looked at the present in Africa, in Equatorial Guinea over, he, Guinea, over here. Uh, what time of day is the sun at 60 degrees from the horizon? And just, and then math. And then, oh, oh. <laughs> I discovered that when it's 10 a.m. in, um, Macapá, Brazil, the sun is at a 60 degree angle from the horizon for our friend looking towards Africa. And then at that same time, around 2 8 p.m., uh, for the person standing in Malabo, Africa, looking towards the west, north, south, east, west. Uh, the sun setting, they're seeing the sun at that 60 degree angle from the horizon around 10.08 a.m. over here. This is so complicated to, just to explain. Because of the time zones, that's the same time, the same moment of the rotation of the earth. So time doesn't really make a difference because the time zones make it so that this is the same time of, uh. and then <laughs> the person in between them is staring up at noon. We have two people facing each other, 60 degree angle, the sun, looking at the same sun. So then what we
we can do is that we can figure out the distance between these two people tells us the difference between each of those people and the sun. And so I, with the Google map distances, it turns out it's not actually 93 million miles. I wrote it down, 4,138 roughly miles. I double checked my math by doing each one with a straight angle and then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What does this mean? This means that the sun is not 93 million miles away. Here we go. This is the triangle where each corner is 60 degrees and then each length side is the same size. And so here we have noon on the equator, the sun is directly overhead. And here we have 10.33 a.m. in Macapapa, Brazil. And that's equivalent to 2.33 p.m. in Malabo, Equatorial Guinea. And so they're each seeing the sun at a 60 degree angle from the horizon when they're facing each other. So this implies a flat plane because if it was on a globe, then you'd have something like this where the person in Macapapa, Brazil is standing looking at the sun at a 60 degree angle from the horizon. And the person in Malabo is doing the same thing, facing each other. Well, the problem with this model is that the sun is not converging into one point the way we had down here is actually diverging so the further the sun is from the earth the more impossible here we can see that the further we are from earth the further the sun is the more of a divergence between the sun and so there's just there's no way to reconcile that with one sun because of the curve on the earth the 60 degree angle at the same moment it just it doesn't, it just doesn't work. This is what it should do. We should expect to see a convergence. So the, the angle at which they see the sun, if they're seeing the sun at the same time, should be such that it ends up with one point in the middle rather than more than 45 degrees. Um, otherwise, if it's greater, then just you have to diverge and then all of a sudden you're each looking at different suns and the person in the middle has their own sun. That just doesn't work. So you can see Macapur, Brazil, this is the person standing parallel to the Earth, and they're measuring their sun at 60 degrees on the horizon. There's the sun that they're looking at, and they're standing here. And then how does that mesh with this person who's looking up at noon and seeing the sun directly overhead? And also then with this person in Malabo. <sighs> oh. If the Earth is curved, and at the same moment, on two places on the equator, you're seeing the sun at a 60 degree angle, it causes this diverging sun effect. It just doesn't work on a curved Earth. It doesn't work on a globe. The only way we can explain what we're observing, what's actually happening, is by assuming a flat Earth. If we assume a globe Earth, there's no way of explaining what we're seeing. This is a problem for the globe Earth reality theory. I think we can't live on a globe. Not with the reality that you can have two different places seeing the sun at the same moment and they're each observing it at a 60 degree angle from the horizon. That just can't happen on a globe. Not when the two places are 4,138 roughly miles apart. Unless the sun is 4,138 roughly miles away and the earth is flat. This is important because it suggests that there's something inconsistent in the facts that we're given to explain the reality that we live in. So if science and scientific institutions are giving us these facts and we're teaching these facts to each other, to our children, but they're not consistent with the observations that we make, that's problematic. And we need, we should be questioning these things. We need to question these things. We can't just dismiss it, all oh, conspiracy theory nonsense, because then we're not using our minds to think and question and to figure things out for ourselves. Then we're just being, could be being brainwashed. Then all of a sudden, science isn't science. Science then becomes faith. It becomes a religion. It becomes a set of beliefs that you're handed, that you just accept without really questioning. Or you question and then you're given answers like because or answers that don't actually 
fit. God lets bad things happen to good people because he works in mysterious ways and you can't understand it. That doesn't seem like a good enough uh, answer for me. That's not really an answer. That's a no, and that's just, I don't know, just, just cannot, nobody knows. And you can't have that in science because science is supposed to be about providing answers based on observation, repeated observations. But if you start making observations that don't fit the theories, then you're supposed to discard the theory. That's not what they're doing. Instead, they're silencing the people that are coming up, pointing out these observations. That's not science. We need, I think, to come together and to talk about this and to decide if we want science to be a religion where we just take things on faith and where things might not always make sense, where uh, theories might not always actually explain what we experience or what we see, if we just want to ignore that because we want the safety and the reassurance of science, then okay, but let's just call it scientism, let's brand it the religion that it is, a belief system, and not pretend that it's anything else. Let's stop pretending that science is a system for acquiring knowledge it's just a belief system in place to perpetuate itself and to control people or to guide their beliefs then let's just admit that if it's a way of acquiring more knowledge and finding theories that explain the actual world and what we observe then it has to answer to why these inconsistencies exist yes oh.